I would like to first talk about the library projects. They were on the agenda for tonight, but then I received a request from Kip Kamoser and I guess the select board to review, and Kip should be coming in, to review a request to maybe put a building up to house the ambulance service. So because of that, I, I asked the library people if they could wait, and they agreed they could wait. But I would like to pick a date right now so we can tell them, here's your new date. OK. All right. Hi, Kip. Hello. Kip. So what they're going to do, they're doing a presentation of the library expansion <coughs> project so far. <coughs> Uh, what they know, what they're going to like bring us up to speed, and then we can ask questions. Uh, it's not a formal request for an appropriation or for money, it's just an update on what's going on. Okay. So, and they did it, they presented it to the Finance Committee, and would it take about 45 minutes, Jeff? Roughly? Yeah, about, roughly about 45 minutes. And it was actually pretty interesting. Um, so, I, we haven't had any requests for capital uh, improvements for us to review. Yeah, it's early. But would two weeks from tonight for the library work for everybody? What's a good date for everybody? It's, oh, actually, I got the sewer. What? Wednesday the 16th before the select board meeting. Um, actually, that's, we're doing um, the interviews or having a public Come and meet, greet on the final finalists for the town administrator at five. I think it's five to five thirty, and then questions. People can ask questions from five thirty to six thirty. So um, that would not be a good night. Thursday the seventeenth. That probably would not work for me. No, it won't work for me either. I'm South County EMS. I mean, we don't we don't really need a quorum either. No. Um, right. Because it's informational. All right. How about, how about Tuesday, Tuesday the 20? How about pushing it to the 5th or 6th of December? Because we don't have any other requests anyway, so it'll be a presentation, and then hopefully we'll have some requests to act on after. Okay. So it works for me. They need sense? to get it done by the end of December. They have. So if we do the 5th or 6th of December? Uh, what night is Wednesday? Is that the 5th? The 5th is Monday. The 6th is Tuesday. The seventh is Wednesday. That works for me. Seventh would be fine at five thirty. Is that all right? No, sixth Tuesday. Oh, you want to do Wednesday? Wednesday because of the select board meeting. Yeah. Tuesday. And we meet at five thirty. Yeah. Would that be okay? It's On fine the with me. Yeah. So five thirty. Five thirty, December seventh. Yeah. Well, the library presentation. Yeah. Okay. Um, is that Pearl Harbor? Yeah. Yes. Oh, I don't know if we should do it then. It's my birthday. <laughs> really? Yeah. And you didn't sink? I came on late. I'm not that old. All right. December 7th, 5.30. All right. CIPC will meet and the library will do their presentation. Okay. Um, next, can we review the minutes? of the October 5th, 2016 meeting, prepared by Jack Davey. Um, I make a motion to accept as presented. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Okay, the minutes Sorry. Are... Sorry. Hmm? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, then... Um, the next thing on the agenda is a presentation by Kip about a building, and I'll let you go from there. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Kip. 
as you all know, that the South County EMS is looking for permanent housing other than the South Deerfield Fire Station. And um, they've been working on doing something in Waitley um, at their new town office building. Um, as you can see, currently, the EMS pays $5,500 per month in rent. They pay $3,000 to South Deerfield Fire District, $1,500 to Sunderland Fire District, and $1,000 to Waitley Fire District. And of that $5,500, Deerfield pays $2,860 per month, Sunderland is $1,760, and Waitley pays $880 a month. Waitley's uh, pretty adamant about going into their building. First thing they're gonna do is, uh, they've already asked, the South County EMS to pay $100,000, up to $100,000, to fund their plans and the consulting of their renovations. Um, with the way that is set up, if they vote to do that, Deerfield Board of Selectmen is the uh, fiscal agent for that. But if that went forward, Deerfield would have to pay $52,000 of that cost, Sunderland would pay $32,000, and Waitley would only pay $16,000. Then if it continued on that road, Waitley uh, proposed rent would be $2,000 a month, plus the $450,000 reno cost paid at $7,500 per month for 60 months. That'd be $9,500 plus the utilities in that building, which are not very efficient. It's a metal building with minimal insulation and has four large overhead radiant heaters in there. Even though they're gas, you know, they're, you know, being equivalent to about 650,000 BTUs. Of that, Deerfield would pay $4,940, Sunderland would pay $3,040, and Waitley would pay $1,520. We'd like to, uh, or I've been looking into building a building over near the fire station, and uh, the way I've worked this out is if we charge South County EMS $3,000 per month for rent. Deerfield would be paying $1,560 of that. Sunderland would be paying $960, and Waitley would be paying $480. The cost of that building is it would be around $850,000. If we borrowed the money for up to 30 years, the monthly payment would be $3,700 per month. Uh, the total monthly cost to the town of Deerfield, if you included the $1,560, which is part of the rent, and the difference between the rent and the loan would be $700. The total amount the town of Deerfield would be paying would be $2,260, which as you can see is about $600 less than what we're currently paying. So it seemed to be, make financial sense to uh, try to pursue this. And then we would have a guaranteed house for that ambulance, you know, for many years to come. So in other words, Kip, the, uh, so there's $100,000, at, at the Waitley location, there's $100,000 to come up with a set of plans to... And their consultants for the renovations. Yeah. For the renovation, and, and the, then the... It's public, then, procure, uh, public procurement, so you have to, you know, go out and get... You have to go out to bed, you have to do an RFP, you go out to bed. They do the specs, you get to have to have an OPM and all this stuff. Right. And so, and then they're at, they estimate a cost of renovating the space is 450000 on top of that. That's what they told me. Well, it's a ballpark. I think. We don't really know what it okay. is. It's, so okay. it's like 550000 Right. But the, the problem that I have with this is all of these numbers, I, I understand that they're estimates, but I think they're extremely high estimates. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it, it's one of the things that, we, as a community, we're not going to have a lot of input other than our representation on this board. And the way it's set up, if Sunderland and Waitley believe that this is a good way to go, Deerfield could say no, and it's still going to happen. Well, it's a partnership. But right. what but, bothers me on this, um, moving to Waitley, is that it's everyone sees this as a temporary location because, you know, you're shoehorning into it. We, we absolutely, I, know, I, went, I went to the meeting and I toured the... And we absolutely need one single location. 
you and, and they, not get from the operation. You're not going to get efficiency unless we have everybody together. But everybody together in a temporary location, you're paying so much for this temporary location. And right. and I agree, it's three to five years. But then you're moving on to a permanent location where you're going to incur these giant costs anyway. Again, yeah. Again. And it was like it just didn't. This is just a couple, couple of my comments. I haven't gone to, to see the... They were talking about the third ambulance having to go in like sideways to get it into the garage. And I was like, well, that, that just means they're going to damage it for sure. They're going to damage the, the ambulance and the building for sure sometime. Well, I, if you were there, I, the, I think we were there at the same time. I was... I, how can I put the word I want to say? i be careful, choose my words carefully. I was quite shocked at the difficulty the operator of that ambulance had backing in there. Mm -hmm. I mean, he had a good two feet on each side of the mirrors, but you know, it was kind of like this and like this, and I was like, you know, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I would think that they would have been better trained drivers, than, but they had difficulties well, maybe, getting in there. I suppose they would learn. Well, I know, but, I, while, I, but I, I can appreciate I your know. statement because I was standing there watching this, and I was like, holy smoly. But and then if they when they come in at I don't know three o'clock in the morning or whatever and they're tired, <laughs> tired and they're, you know. I mean but, you can put reflector tape on yeah. so that you you know have cheat I mean that's how I back up is you get cheat sheet mm -hmm. things on the ground and maybe you could get them back up I mean how I do you know what you do with a trailer and stuff because yeah. you know I'm not that good mm -hmm. but so I mean I can imagine well that then they the other thing is they were going to take part of the building put the like the end of the the side of the building, if I remember, and it, and it would be, there would be a number of office rooms. There was a room to, for, uh, for the employees to sleep in, maybe the yeah. overnight employees. But it seemed like there were no, there were no windows. There were no windows, and that was and it, one of the gripes. I mean, you know, when this went out, the <coughs> RFP went out. It was the board of oversight and the Deerfield Select Board. Well, I guess there was one person. There were. I shouldn't say it like that. There were other members on this Board of Oversight, and they chose to reject the Waitley uh, proposal for a number of reasons. Um, you know, my own personal thing is I don't think that the difference in location, distance-wise, is a big issue. It's the location of the Waitley one being where it is coming out of Pine Street, because that day that I went there just so happened to be on a Tuesday, and there was a large tractor-trailer truck, a chicken truck, blocking and with my Prius I couldn't get by I had to stop and wait the truck driver couldn't get out of the intersection because the road was so busy and so I, I sat there for I don't know five minutes until he moved then I could get in the same scenario could hold true with an ambulance trying to get out you know they can be behind there with their lights and sirens and if that truck driver can't pull out he's not going to he's going to sit there um, you know and so that was my big concern with that location um, you know they had uh, other thoughts about trying to go through an industrial park and you know we and building a road through the building a road and you know we, we we I spoke with the folks from DDIC and I understand why that can't happen um, but the other people didn't want to accept the explanation so we spent money with a, on a lawyer we you know DDIC did a survey of the um, you know park people and you know they're taxpayers, and that, and it's their choice not not to have that happen. And so you know we need to um, so take to, that's an indication that that's what we should do. The answer, that's the answer. My understanding too, there's a buffer zone there yes. that yeah. legally we can't Cross. intrude on. Well, and that's one of the legal things that um, you know Paul Oshesky had brought up, and right. but it to me. It was the fact that he did a survey, and yes, he can ask questions in a certain way or whatever, but the answer was, you know, the park didn't want to have a throughway, and, you know, the park people um, that are already there. And you know what? They're already taxpayers, and, and they pay to maintain the park. So if that's their decision, then we should stand up behind it. I mean, that's how I feel. I agree with you. So, you know... Can we go over the Deerfield number, Deerfield location numbers again, because I got lost. Okay. Um, where, where do you get the skims pay 3000 per month? Where did the 3000 come from? I guess you could 
consider it an arbitrary number. It's where it came from is that's what they're currently paying now. All the towns are assessed of that. that oh, when I say that, that's that what they're really paying to South Deerfield. That's what they're currently paying to South so Deerfield Fire Kip, District. Kip just picked that number. Yes. I, I asked Barbara, I, I just want to clarify that 3,700. I asked Barbara if we went, you know, because Kip said he thinks the building would cost somewhere around 800 to 900,000. So I said, okay, 850. If we had to borrow 850, yeah, that's what it was going to be. And so Barbara said that she looked it up, that's got a quote, and so I just want to say ballpark for that time frame was 3700 a month. That's where the 3700 came. And the thing that I'd like to add, too, is this is probably the only building in town that is actually going to be getting rent and money back, so it will be paying back that uh, loan that we would need to take on that building. No, I'm trying to get. I'm trying to get it. Huh? I heard somewhere that that rent was going to go into a separate account. And the, well, there's there's a couple of ways that we can do it. We can do that. Uh, you know, we can use part of that money to pay off the loan, or because if if you look at it, there's two different ways to look at it. If we were paying rent to go somewhere else, we would not get that money back, right? And we'd still be paying that. So you know, we could take part of that money and put it toward the loan. We could take part of that money and put it aside for future uh, you know, improvements, renovations, maintenance, you know, roof or whatever, which I think a lot of that makes a lot of mm -hmm. sense. That way when the time comes through, you don't have to you know, be scrounging looking for money to uh, pay for it. We're, we're so, paying 52%. We're paying 52%. 52% of 3,700 is 1,924. I don't, so I don't know how you get the 2,260. That's where I'm lost. No, uh, the town's paying the 3,700. Where I got that from is I took the 3,000 dollars. Not the. And you take 52 percent of the 3,000. That's a 1,560. If I didn't screw up with my calculator. Yeah, we got to okay. pay the debt service. Okay, so that's that, what that is. That's so, the bottom line is so, we got to pay the, the loan. Whether you no, call no, no, it no, rent, that, whether you call it debt service, whatever. Well, no. If South County EMS is paying rent to Deerfield, okay? So of that $3,000, $1,560 is our 52% of the $3,000. But if you, now, that's what Skims pays. Now, that's what the town of Deerfield would get as income. But there's a difference of $700 between the loan payment of thirty-seven and the rent income yeah, okay. of three thousand. Yeah, so that's what's yeah. right. So we'd have to make up that seven hundred dollar difference. So Deerfield share would actually be uh, Deerfield share would be fifteen sixty plus the seven hundred. Right, which right, would be yeah. twenty two sixty. But so who owns the building though? The Deer, town of Deerfield, Deerfield owns it. Town of rents, it to rents it to South County EMS. How comfortable are you with the eight hundred and fifty thousand for three bays, offices, bathrooms? Comfortable as far as the amount. I'm I'm pretty comfortable. I mean, I, I I looked at this a couple of different ways. You know, first thing I did is, uh, you know, material takeoff on you know the building. I consulted with uh, an electrician, a plumber, an HVAC, an insulation guy, a concrete contractor, and got prices from them. Then I did the only, if you will, guesswork is I tried to calculate in the number of hours for each subcontractor with at prevailing wages and then I still added about 15 percent to cover any leeway of that. Um, I've also showed the plans to uh, a general contractor who does you know this type of uh, construction when I say public construction and I got a price back from him and I was actually surprised because it was seven hundred and fifty eight thousand uh, dollars. So you know that, that still left us with money. Um, I talked with um, it would have to be an RFP, so. Right, well, I, right, and I understand that. But I also talked with an engineering firm uh, that does, um, you know, that could actually consult and draw the plans, make the material as the specifications to go out of it. And that was only 25000 So when I, when I heard Waitley wanted $100,000, I'm like, I, I just, I didn't get it. And But even that RFP is one of the things that have to go out to bid. But, you know, you can. Well, to be fair to Waitley, it's you, they were asking up to 100,000. So, I mean, we don't I understand really, that, but this is this is the liability that we could be exposed to. I mean, if that's what they said. And yeah, I came back with them and I and I tried to explain to them that this 
avenue is even less money for Waitley too, so, but. Yeah, Waitley would end up paying 480 a month. Yeah. What about? Instead of 880. This is um, net rent, net lease, the 3,000 per month? Yeah, there'd, there'd be, in the draft lease agreement, they would be responsible for their electric bill, their heating bill, the internal maintenance of the building, the water, sewer, um, Skimswood. Skimswood. They would be responsible for that. Just um, like they would with like weight building. building. In the weight right. building, right. But this would be insulated, this would be... Right. Oh, it's, yeah, it would be much, much... Cost. Uh, right. Operating cost. Right. Right. Um, you you commented that it would be more efficient to have it all, everybody based in one spot. Are they going to run three ambulances at a time? Why, how is it going to be more efficient to park three ambulances in one spot? Well, what happens, Roger, is that currently we have one ambulance in one space. Yeah, I understand. So they go out for a call. Yeah. That means the other EMTs now have to travel to Sunderland and pick up another ambulance to come here to wait. So if that So what other EMTs are going to well, come? Well, there are other EMTs. There's another They're stationed at the station? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. there's, there's usually always four people there. Really? Mm -hmm. The thing is, we're, um, you can get six to seven, this is where Jeff, and this is where, you know, when I talk about growth, it's constant, flex, you have to be flexible and you have to be on top of it, but mm -hmm. an ambulance will do six to 700 runs on the average. When you're over above that, then you have a second ambulance. But that second ambulance still has the capability of six to seven runs. We are about, 1,000 to 1,100 runs. So we have cap a ca capacity of about three to 400 runs extra for growth. So what you're trying to do constantly is fill, get towards your maximum. That's why you want to do intercepts. That's why you want to do stuff with that second ambulance. So we're trying to develop a business like? Well, no, you're trying to run this as efficient as possible, right? Well, but wasn't it pretty efficient the way it was? Well, no, yeah. absolutely not. We weren't making it, Roger. What it was is what's happened now. That's it, we were going for put, and we were not making runs. It was, we were 50 minutes Oh, well, I lived in the eight. community, and I didn't have any problem the way the ambulance service was. All right, Roger, but we don't need to. What, what's happened that. is that uh, the cost of running our ambulance has actually decreased for about $40,000 from what it was about eight years ago, or even five years ago. But the biggest and most important thing is the response time. Is now it's down on an average of they say seven to ten minutes. And that you know before, you know it, if you called the ambulance, they would call John and Jim at home, and they'd have to get in their cars, drive down to the fire station, get an ambulance, and you, you lost all that time. Now the people are there, so when you call for the ambulance, they're they're there. They just get in the vehicle and come. And that's the important thing. I know so, at every meeting that's all they really speak I, about is response time. It isn't like that we have better qualified people on the... Well, we, on, we were on, running on, the basic, Roger, and now we're running the paramedic. That's well, a huge difference. Yeah. I know, but oh, we didn't lose any people prior to that. It was all they really comment on is response time. But, but wasn't the part, of the, part of the... Part of the idea behind... For the, the cost structure of having a full-time service was that you could do more runs because you could uh, you could go to an accident on 91 and and not have Northampton go or Greenfield go so you could for example well that would I'm, be where you're trying to you're you're picking up more of those so you're picking runs. up more revenue you're picking yes. up more revenue, revenue because you have the ability to go out on yes. more on more calls that we were that not, we were passing we were never off to doing other before. Right. But, the, but the main thing is and just not that, the response actually... time. The response time is fantastic, right. but we also are fully <clears throat> paramedic. Every run is a paramedic run, not a basic. And, and what you were doing before when you did a basic, you were calling out to surrounding ambulances that were a paramedic level and you were coming in. And every time that um, that you know, intercept happened, the town was billed for $275 or whatever it is for every intercept. Plus, you were not collecting that patient's insurance. Right. So it was a huge potential liability 
every time you ran an intercept. And so now we are running the intercepts, and that is huge from a revenue point of view and stability. But you, you have this transition where you have to go to Sunderland or Waitley to pick up the other ambulances to make cover if you have simultaneous runs. I mean, there's a lot to this whole ambulance thing. It's not, it's not straightforward. So there has been an increase in revenue. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That has, that, absolutely. Yeah, that has we're paying gone towards less than we were for a basic yeah. so before. So that's, that's, that's the reason that we're paying less than. Exactly, because they're, they're generating around 490, well, last year, $490,000 they generate. And this past year. This past year. And I think that they're collecting about 85% of what they're building. That's good. So, you know, it's, it's pretty good. Um, and they're okay. following up on what is That's not right. collectible. What is not collectible is really just information that was mis-entered or by the whatever. It, you know, it's wrong addresses, wrong insurance numbers, whatever. And so they actually are following up on that. So hopefully our collection rate is truly better. It isn't that they're bad accounts. They're just accounts that don't go through right. the system. So we try to fix that. Why not make the rent 4000 a month? Let's you charge could. Waitley and Sun one more. You could. You could. But, but you the know, idea is not to make money on this. We're trying to be. Fair. I mean, we, we the not service, money, but the less. service generates, you know, money anyways. And I mean, it, it's the only thing in town that does that, you know. It's no, but it's an arbitrary number. It is. It is totally arbitrary. So and, I, I guess well, this is more of a rhetorical question. Why not make it more arbitrary in our favor? Because then you, what I perceive as the risk in doing that is if we don't make this real attractive, then now it's going to be a com competition that you know if Waitley can get their numbers down, then it's going to want to go there. You know, and I'm trying to make this you know fair and equitable. And attractive, you know. And I think this way, it, you know, we're we're, we're going to be paying money. we're, we're paying saving. less money, yeah. even though we're paying the majority. Agreed. Agreed. And and yet, and now w w we will have the service here in town, which I've heard from an awful lot of people that that's what they really want. Uh, some of them for you know peace of mind, and some of them for I'm not sure why, but you know, there's a lot of folks that want to keep the ambulance in town. Do you have another copy? Do you have a copy for Ken? Yeah. Ken, you can have my copy. Thank you. Oh. Well, I'm not. <laughs> We're not running the meeting. It's John's meeting. Yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm on the committee, but I'm just uh, well, there again. I guess you know. I understand where you're coming from, Henry, but uh, I guess you know three or four hundred dollars more would only go into Kitty as far as long-term. Repairs and improvements to the building, which uh, the way you're setting it up now, the rent is not going to cover that. It's only it won't even cover the loan, much less right. any uh, repairs or improvements down the road. Correct. So that's a legitimate involvement, as far as you know, what I would say. Uh, the other comment I had made when one of the long-term goals that I had thought was a long-term goal was soon, sometime. Depending on not today, tomorrow, next year, or five years, from, but there was talk of potentially merging the fire department and the EMS, so that you had cross, so you had firemen, paramedics. In which case, a <coughs> location next to each other would be a prime requirement. You can't have firemen here, and and, and they're going to run the ambulance out of a, someplace else down the road. Right. So if you if you're going to uh, sometime you know somewhere down the road you know 10 15 20 years have a complete EMS service that really needs to be in the same location the fire as well as the would, so would that be a regional fire department then not necessarily no well see it, then it could very well be Roger right you know or again you know we're right now we're looking very short sighted with just. We're well, still talking just well, the I mean, that's one of the, the fire one of the reasons for having it in that location. But you know, the problem is you have fire districts, so right. And you, I didn't you can't I, speak not to next the year, fire year district. after. Right. Know. 
but, but the long-term goal. Right, we is. have met with the fire district, and their intention is the next five or ten years to have um, at least one or two full-time staff. Right. Um, in addition, so. Uh, Actually, and, I believe I believe it's uh, uh, going into effect in January. Well, it might, but it might. But they, they are advertising for EMT firefighters, so the idea is that potentially that that is a person on site that could run an ambulance. Right. I mean, it, it would be across the parking lot, but it would be across the parking lot instead of somewhere. Right. right. But regional and a regional fire. I mean, that's probably years years away. But you have to be thinking about those kind of things that's, because that's what I'm saying. Right. Because it. I mean, the cost of. I mean, it's very. Everybody's community is getting older, and the number of volunteers and the and the training requirements for the firefighters are getting really prohibitive too. So, I mean, it's. It's the transition, we're in a transition period where we're from a volunteer community to more professional services. And it's just no choice, um, you know, because between the requirements and the aging population. So, I mean, we just don't have enough volunteers. Oh, I agree with you. That's, that's, that's why I brought it up. It's, that should be part of parsley overall picture is... I mean, well, that's what part of the argument of why it's important to, you know, in the, in the building being right there, you know, I'm not sure where to go. They, the fire department does not have enough room to house three ambulances in any Oh, I, I know so that, but I'm not on the same property. Yeah, being on the same property, well, no. Well, property. You know, we, yeah, it's, it's, it's adjacent to it, you know. I mean, yeah. I don't know what would happen three years down the road or five years down the road if the fire department does do that. You know, I'm sure that we'd all have to get together and, and figure that out. You know, maybe it would move in the direction like Amherst and Hadley, where they don't have the ambulance in Hadley. They rely on, they pay a certain amount of money to Amherst, and Amherst covers the community. Maybe that's, you know, maybe the South County EMS will, you know, evolve into that type thing. And then the other communities would just pay to cover their towns. I, I don't know. But there's a lot of questions there that I, I don't have the answers to. And, and like I said, the fire district is separate, so we can't. Okay. I do it. Yeah. Yeah. You all set? Yep. Yeah. Um, I got a couple of questions. I trust the land. It's town land, right? Yes. So there'll be no rent for the land. Correct. And I, we, um, I'm concerned. Um, there's been a lot of people are not happy with this, with the way it's set up. I think everybody's happy with the service and the heart attacks and stuff are being handled very well, but organizationally, I think a lot of people are dissatisfied. So what happens if two years from now, Waitley says, the heck with this, we're out of it. That was gonna be my and, question. And we, we and now we got a building, now we got a building that's. Right. And, I, and I thought about that, and worst case scenario, if, if, if the South County EMS blew up, we now have the knowledge of how it did operate and how it did function, and that we would, as a community, we still need to have an ambulance service. Mm -hmm. So these people that are involved are now, what do I want to say, town employees. So there's no reason that, you know, Deerfield wouldn't just take over this thing. And like I said, then if, if it left Waitley out, what would Waitley? They'd have to provide service for their community. So they're, they're stuck with either, you know, going back to the way they were or to pay, you know, Deerfield to cover their area or, Amherst to cover their area, you know, I, I don't know what they're, but I think, I don't think that they would want to do that. I mean, that's why they came I mean, on board. I mean, it is working. It it's is working, working for all the communities, so I think uh, it's, it's, I know, I, I wasn't real thrilled about getting onto that committee, but, um, you know, and I made it very well known that I think keeping that service together is, was always been my priority, and I don't want to irritate our partners in this. I want to do the best thing for everybody. And that's kind of where I, I kind of picked that number for. And it doesn't have to stay that. I mean, like I said, it was very arbitrary. I'm, we, just, concerned, we, I'm just concerned about the, it, I, the downside risk of having a vacant building. Or at least oh, have, never, I don't our think two-thirds never... vacant because Waitley and Sunderland but we, don't, don't like it. We've seen how this works. So even if the other pe folks backed out, we could still do this and do the intercepts and stuff. And, you know, I, I question the thing is, well, is it a business? But... You know, you have to, you don't have to, but it's important to have this type of coverage. And with our present management, they have been working on a way, on ways 
to keep an ambulance available for any one of us who need it, but yet have another ambulance to do these transports and stuff where they're Agreed. making money. That's not the issue, though. If they leave, then we've got an $850,000 building that maybe we should have built for 300000 or well, 450000 It's not. It's it, going to be too big. No, it won't be because we're always going to need at least two ambulances. So all we're really talking about is... Did we have two ambulances day. before SCIMS? No, we didn't. We had one. So... What but our but what I'm saying, John, is now, we're see, now we've seen how we can make money at this to offset the... the, the I can't use exact numbers because I don't know, but before we were paying four hundred to five hundred thousand dollars a year. That's what we were paying, and we had the basic level, and we had twenty-minute response times, unless you were really close. Now we're spending about three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. We have seven-minute response time, and we have paramedic um, service twenty-four-seven. Understand? I get it. Yeah. So, so we're never so we're never going to have an empty building. So if Whitley got out, we'd still have revenue from from whatever Deerfield and Sunderland. So we wouldn't right. True, we'd have to we'd have to pick up the their four hundred eighty dollars a month. But still, we we and it must be that the bulk of the calls are Deerfield. Bulk of the Deerfield. Call, we're yeah. we're close to sixty percent of the calls. Right. <clears throat> so. We pay 52%. We're running close to 60% of the calls. So, I mean, we still are basically a two ambulance community. But the thing would, I don't see that ever being empty, you know. Well, I'm not empty. But, I'm not, I know. I don't but it might extra be a, space, maybe a unused un space. Under underutilized, underutilized. underutilized. Underutilized, yeah. But it's not, uh, there are, there's three offices in there, and there's two bunk rooms, two bathrooms, and then one if you will, a community room that's about 15 by 20. It's not huge. I mean, there's not a lot. The whole building is only 3,800 square feet. It's not a huge building at all. So it's going to have a community room? It has a community center, yeah. The, oh, okay. The, I don't want to I hate to get on that road, but the library's talking about having a community room. No, 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 no. Not for the community. It's, it's you know, if, if they want to put on... Uh, you, have, you have continuing ed. so. Some things can be, they could have in their thing, but they would also be using the South Deerfield fire um, little community area, their meeting room, if they had to have a bigger space for their continuing ed. I didn't necessarily mean a community for the people in the community yeah. to go there and hang out. out for weddings? No, okay. no, 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 no. No, it's, right. it's, okay. for, their, it's for their own functions and stuff like that. Actually, I think you might have the, op the opposite scenario if you did take one of the towns they decide to bail out. And if we were in it, uh, parked in another town, now you're in a bind to keep, find a house to bring it back to town if you don't already have that. So you could have the opposite scenario. If, if you want to use Waitley as an example, if they said, you know, we, we're all done with, uh, with this, we want you out of the oh, yeah, right. building. Now you, you, you still have to provide room for the ambulance. Now you're in the opposite scenario where you got caught with your pants down yeah, and no go? place to put an uh, ambulance at all. Yeah. Because once you move out of the fire department, they're not going to let you back in. They are just scrapped for room. They have plans for expansion. And it's, it's, a, good not, point. it's a not a viable thing. It's a good point. And if nothing else, they could expand into that building with some of their secondary vehicles. <clears throat> Plus there's no way you're going to recoup your cost of the renovation. On top, by on top of that, that's just on top of it. See, you know. I guess where I was coming from is that, you know, if you're putting all this money into Waitley's building, you know, I was just, I was shocked that it was only going to be a three to five year situation because right. it was, they were going to be shoehorned into it. Well, and, it. And then they were going to look for a permanent place. And it's like, oh my gosh. Right, exactly. You know, we can't. Who can afford that? It, we, we need to go to the permanent place now. That's what they talked about uh, when they first brought that up. It was only a temporary relocation. I know. Two and years I, ago. I, yeah. And it just, it doesn't make sense. I mean, we can't afford no, that kind of, We can't afford that kind of money it's for a temporary situation. So. And why are they considering it as temporary? Because it's your shoehorning. I mean, it, it, there's. It's too small it's in the first place. Is it really, too small? Yeah. yeah, it's really constrained and it, like. Everybody said the ambulances were having a hard time getting into the garage part and everything. So 
the, I, the idea was we, there was a lot of issues and so we appointed ourselves, the select board. There was, I, I couldn't think of any other way to make this happen so all three of us are on the board now, the oversight board, and we are committed to see the organization be successful and to move forward and this seemed like the correct thing to do because why, why, have a temp why invest time and money and energy into a temporary situation? We just need to do go to the permanent. So that's what we've been working on is the permanent. And, and so hopefully this will get sorted out and we'll move on and get somebody to take our places. But in the meantime, the, we're committed as a select board to make this happen and to, make, and to solve it. And that's why we wanted to bring this to the capital committee because um, we didn't know how you wanted to handle that because we, we have to move forward. We, we have the December date for submission, but we're not sure how we've po postponed our special town meeting because we're still a lot of things that we're checking out. So we wanted the capital committee to know we can submit paperwork if you wish um, so that we are not in violation of the December 1st date. Um, and it was important that we have this discussion as a group. So, I mean, there's no decision to be made at this point, um, but we wanted you to have the information. I guess the decision is where do we as a committee go from here? Yeah. Um, well, one thing I'd like to interject is, you know, if these numbers are correct, I would say that in the long term, it would be less expensive for all three towns. Yes. And that you would have a permanent, you would have a permanent building that you wouldn't have to try to deal with three years out or five years out. Mm -hmm. You eliminate all that guesswork. <clears throat> and, and, and once again, coming back to the long term of it actually being less expensive for all three towns, not only Deerfield, but all three towns. And I'd, I'd like to add into this that I, and I could be wrong, and I know that this is on TV, but I, I felt like I've been running up against a brick wall every inch of the way doing this. Um, there's no doubt in my mind that I feel that the majority of the Board of Oversight is wanting to move toward the Waitley location. And, you know, they want a five-year lease on a temporary thing. And we're going to spend all of this money, you know, it's just... <clears throat> Well, but to be fair, Kip, it's only, we went down there and got, took the information in and said, you know, this is crazy to be putting this in as money oh. into a temporary situation. Well, I understand, but you were yeah. there, I mean, and, and, I, I and know, Waitley still I, wants to push forward on it, and they, yeah. they tried. But nobody, you know. but they've been giving us time. We, well, you know, we've yeah. put it off, we put off the decision, and yeah. also, you know, we had no real concrete numbers until the last, you know, month. And so, I mean, we, we were saying that you could do it, but yeah. when you see this in black and white, and you see this as a permanent home, it makes total sense, because everybody is paying less. Right. It's a permanent home. It makes a, a smart move. So I, I, I do want to say that no, nobody was, you know, pressuring the vote or anything. I mean, there was pressure that we had to get our act together, and that was one of the reasons we're moving forward on this. So, I, so they haven't seen this? Well, I got most of the numbers from them. <laughs> so yeah, they no, they, everyone is aware of the numbers down there. So the Waitley location that's been proposed into the old <clears throat> library building that the town of Waitley bought is a temporary fix? It was, yeah. oh, it was, we were, it was explained to us it was a three to five year temporary location. And... And that's why this is everything has to be paid off in five years. Whereas our permanent location well, how, I mean, was just, we were running a thirty year. I don't read the articles extensively, but I've read the talk papers about have, papers have had <coughs> I've read talk about the weight relocation <coughs> for how many years now? Three three or four years. And have never heard that it was a temporary location. I mean it's um, so I'm because I'm looking here, if it's not a temporary location and it would be a permanent location, you're going to spend a total of $660,000 over 30 years to renovate, construct, move in, 
pay off that loan in, as I'm reading this, and if I'm wrong, then correct me, in 60 months. Then you will go down to a, an average payment of about um, 1,040 a month in rent. Over the remaining, just bear with me a second, 25 years, the total cost comes out to about 660,400. The total cost of the building proposed in Deerfield is, um, well, it's 1.3 million, but Deerfield's share of it's going to be less than that. I hadn't, I hadn't calculated that yet, but you're looking at a, a fair amount of money that you're investing in a building in comparison. But if it's not, if it's not a permanent solution, that changes the picture. Well, completely. all I can say is I don't know if you were here in the beginning, the but the Board of Oversight, before Carol and Trevor and I were on there, the, the RFP went out, and the Board of Oversight, not us, rejected the Waitley location, mm -hmm. and Waitley is continued to push for it. Well, wait, we continued to push for it because they sold based on what they assumed was an agreement or a, a potential agreement sure. with the Board of Oversight and SCAMS. Um, and that's, I mean, my biggest concern with this whole process has been where Waitley has ended up. I haven't been involved in the negotiations. I, I sat in, I'm, I'm sitting in now at the tail end of this this discussion, I sat in on a joint school committee meeting in the middle of the summer where their plans for having the superintendents or the Union 38 Frontier Regional Administration move into that building also got pulled out from under them because it was much more affordable and sensible to move the, the administrative offices into the Frontier Regional School where there's now space available for it. But see what, and I look at it, Ken, is that you're right. No. It isn't that it was pulled out from underneath him. A, a better, a more financially prudent option appeared. And what I've said to Waitley all along through this is, if you've been working this for two years, how come it didn't happen? You know, it, it was not opposition from us, but it, it just didn't happen. And you know, a lot of the things, like even this thing, and it gets a little graphic, but in the Waitley location, when they back the ambulance in, they can't take the stretcher out to, to clean in there. And if they get somebody who is very sick in the ambulance and they need to take this all apart and clean, they can't do that. What they have to do is drive the ambulance forward about 10 feet, then they can take the stretcher out and clean it. Well, in the winter time, you're losing a lot of heat, you know, people have to be dressed up. You know, it's just- Well, except part of the renovation is to extend out. No, 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 that was, well, that is another option, but that wasn't part of it. They were gonna it, remove the loading dock well, I can't remove the loading dock no, because, you know, the way the, the concrete went, the uh, supporting beams and wall are on the edge of that, so they, they I can't. I thought the 450 included the building. So, so they, were going to, they were going to add on eight feet on the front of the building to make that move. That, that was another option, but yeah. that, I don't know how much that That wasn't included in I don't believe it was. Oh, I thought it was. But Because that, so. that would increase that their was, square footage. Yeah, well, I don't know. So anyway, it seemed like as as everybody considered the Waitley location, there there were more and more. It, it seemed like a great idea meeting. at first, but then right. when you really started thinking about it and looking at all these problems that compound on themselves, it's really not. And then it and maybe that's why it then became a, a temporary solution, not a and they, they were permanent. And even one. the office space, I mean. The, the people office, that were going to work there, they didn't want to work in an office that didn't have windows. Well, the office space was going to be like, like those offices along the wall here yeah. with no windows. Right. It was like working in a prison. Right. <laughs> and that's another reason they didn't like it. Yeah. Well, I, and it has been public. I'm pointing to Bruce because no, so you can't get your attention. Oh. Uh, no, I was just going to say it has been public that it was going to be a temporary three to five year thing. I mean, that was new information to me too, Ken. Bruce, yeah, that, that was mentioned several times by the previous Board of Oversight. Unfortunately, a lot of the minutes and things like that, don't you don't see that, but if you went back to some of the uh, YouTube videos and so forth, mm -hmm. uh, that was mentioned many times. Put a dollar value on it, going back on the other subject here, if you used a total of 2261, would, if you took all the rent and put it towards the mortgage, so Deerfield had a balance of 2260. Uh, you'd come out at approximately uh, three cents on the tax rate, which would be about seven dollars a year 
to pay for that building for on the average taxpayer. Well, we wanted to talk, we wanted to bring it to the Capital Committee. And we will formally submit for the December 1st deadline um, if we, if this is going to go forward. Well, I think we need a formal s submission. Yeah. And then we'll, but, and then, then we can then we'll vote discuss on and vote and, yeah. vote on, and vote on whether we recommend it. Okay. Yep. Okay. We just wanted you to know that. That's good. And so, is this supposed to be, is this being voted on at the special town meeting? Something to do with this building? Well, or? We're, we're putting it off until we figure out what we are going to do. I mean, this, it has to go, I mean, the, the Board of Oversight has to decide a recommendation to the select board. And the select, which is us, and we right. sit on the board. So it's confusing. But then the select board will submit to the capital, I'm assuming, and we will also set the warrant article when we figure out what the warrant article will actually say for the special town meeting. So right now the special town meeting is put off. I think, I think we're looking at January 9th or something like that. But that's not only a tentative date. I mean, it, it, it just depends on how this pans out. But so then we vote on it and we recommend to the Board of Selectmen whether we approve or disapprove. Right. And then you do what you want subject well, to taking into consideration our thoughts. I know. But <laughs> that's how it works. I know, but we, what we wanted to do, I mean, what we're talking about makes sense, long-term sense, and it also makes sense financially. But so we know, wanted you, know, you to have it. It's like, I know. you know, I know. personally, it's like another building. I know, I know. It makes sense, but just we're don't talking, have a fit until we see the you see the final. You know, we're talking about a major library expansion that's being considered. Oh, um, I know, and I know, and I hear you. And I, the I'm, senior center. I'm the same way, but it, it's like the uh, utility bills at this building would be less than 10 percent of what they are at the highway garage. And just a comparison, because when they built that, built that building, just with the library, they, you know, I don't care what they say, there was no. No conservation applied in that thing at all. And, and as a builder, I, I'm still mesmerized how a house has to comply with all of these insulation regulations, and especially in Deerfield, because we're a stretch energy com community. And yet, they build something like that, or like atrium in the library, and it's like, it, it, all the heat just goes right out the window, literally. And, well, huh? it, the library design is not, I mean, that has, is up for discussion. So, I, know. I mean, well, you're only you're only just applying for the the footprint, and then the what it really looks like. We've already talked about you know making sure we have more conservation because we can't can't afford operating costs and stuff like that. So. Then I'm not saying the library is a bad project. I'm not. I'm just saying there's another huge capital cost on the horizon. Yep. I know. Well, we a lot of the renovation the sewage, of the sewage, the sewage center, treatment, the sewage well, treatment, the sewage, the sewage I, I plant. We haven't even gotten into that. Senior you center. have sewer, the sewer, and I think Roger would be one of the first people to remind us that the water system is pretty old. And, I mean, there's a lot of things. So. Very well maintained, though. Well, I mean, it, the infrastructure, <laughs> some of the infrastructure is really old. Right, Roger? 50s. Really? I thought we had some, some of the pipes are really are a lot older. There's, there's some that are older, but not the majority by any means. That's all <coughs> primarily old. <people. laughs> Supposedly in Northampton, they still have wooden pipes. They do? No. You might have to know yeah, that. That's what they told me. They were digging it up and re, when they were digging up Con Street. They told me that in, in some places they still have wooden, on all Rand about logs. On Randolph Place, which is across mm -hmm. from where that Yes computer is, uh -huh. I built those condos in 86 and there was a tree trunk for water main up through there. But it wasn't active though. <laughs> yes, it was. It was active? They, it was active. Hard to had, believe. They dug it, they had to dig it all up and replace it because there's an old apartment complex right there. It still exists. Yep. Uh -huh. It's not there anymore. Anyway. Um, any further discussion on what Kip brought to the table? Um, the only other thing, we, I got a note from uh, the Board of Assessors that they have no capital requests for fiscal year 18? 18. 
that's the one. Um, We're in fiscal year 17 right now. Right. So then the next meeting will be December 7th, 5.30, uh, presentation by the library. I don't know, trustees, board, I don't know, his, his official title, um, about the expansion of the library. And that'll be at 5.30, December 7th, unless something else happens, that's our next meeting, All right? Mm -hmm. Do you want me to have Pat post it, John? Or do you, we well, just I, get, I, I just got a routine. It. I just send an email. And, okay. um, then I'll make a motion. We adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Thank you. Aye. Aye.